Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to the Daily Volatility Box Report for December 16th, 2019. We are TOSIndicators.com, home of the Volatility Box. In today's video, we'll cover activity both over today as well as uh, last Thursday and Friday uh, when I was still on a plane ride. Uh, it seems like Thursday and Friday were some really, really nice trading days for all of you. Uh, so I'm a little bummed that I missed it, but I'm glad that I'm finally back. Finally have my desktop in front of me with some really good internet connection again. Uh, it's things that I used to take for granted, but uh, just what, today is a day to feel a little bit of gratitude uh, towards having that. Anyway, so we'll cover uh, Thursday and Friday's activity. Today's activity was fairly muted, so let's uh, start by looking at the S&P. Right? And on the S&P right now, we're on Thursday's chart. And Thursday was the first opportunity where as soon as we had this breach, we had our chart bubble come up, letting us know that we were likely trending up. And this happened at a price point of right around 3165. And if we take a look at what the market's currently at from where we had this first indication that the market was trending up, we're up about 30 handles. So that in itself has been a pretty reliable, nice trade for those of you that have used this as a signal. However, for us using the volatility box, this is really just giving us our bias, right? And so after we have this, if you're still in the aggressive volatility box, then you're looking at longs only. And that long opportunity came right here as you essentially caught what ended up becoming, I think, the bottom for most of the market activity, even uh, as of today. And so that was the absolute lowest point in which you could have caught this reversal uh, from which the S&P ripped higher. And if you had done so, then you improved that 31.65 uh, down to right around 31.50. So another 15 handles that you were able to take out of the market. And similarly, this notification occurred across our indices, right? So if we switch over to the Dow, We'll see the same thing, likely trending up. And on the Dow, we had two trending ups. That's because both our aggressive and our conservative volatility boxes both gave us that signal. So once again, uh, from where we got that signal, which was right around 28.50 on the Dow, uh, currently right up to 28.233, so up several hundred points. Now if we go to the NASDAQ, same thing, right? Likely trending up. That happened uh, right around the 84.60 price level. Currently trading at, well, let's just say 8,600. Uh, so up about 140 handles. And then finally, the Russell is what we'll take a look at. Same sort of signal on Thursday. Uh, and that was trading closer to 1644, 1646, and we're currently at 1654. So a little bit less of a gain in the Russell compared to the other indices, but we can see from where we had this first initial sign that, hey, the markets are likely trending up, what the volatility box continued to do. So that's takeaway number one, just having that sort of information. Now we'll switch to uh, our conservative volatility box, which is what most of us would have done, especially once you saw that in that first hour, the volatility box was not respecting our levels. And so if you weren't using this as bias and still looking to fade both sides, then the conservative volatility box is what you needed to use, especially if you were considering remotely the idea of a short. Right? And so now if we switch on over to the conservative volatility box, we'll go through the same set of indices again. So now in our conservative volatility box, we see that price still exceeded, again, giving you that bullish bias. Uh, and now, however, if you were still looking at the short as a potential fade, that short entry came right here as you had an opportunity to short the S&P. Uh, and that's shorting while we had a bullish bias. So this is a bit more of a dangerous, risky trade, uh, but really the one that ha occurred, especially for those of you that like to trade fades a little bit more. Uh, and now if we continue on to the next day, the conservative volatility box again gave you an opportunity to get long. Uh, as price fell into our volatility box, you stayed inside of the volatility box, giving you, again, a really nice reversal. And if you kept in mind uh, the previous day's bullish bias, then that continued to help you with this bullish overall bias that helped you take out some really nice gains, right? Because that was still, once again, at the 31.65, and we ended up at, we're currently at 31.94, right? And so this was your second opportunity to really buy close to that 31.65 mark. Uh, up about two points, uh, but still giving you that really nice entry with a nice risk to reward that ultimately set you up for a really nice longer uh, play, uh, especially if you had multiple contracts. And if we go down the line once again, and this is how we'll conclude tonight's video, is looking at what the conservative volatility box here, uh, we see that it still breached outside of the volatility box in that first hour. So really not uh, the, the safest to fade for anything short, but you were good for anything long using our volatility boxes. And now if we bring this into Friday, uh, we can take a look again in that first hour, we breached the conservative volatility box entry line, but we still continue to make that move in the opposite direction, giving us the okay to look for fades and no real fades. And then if we look at today's activity, we stayed inside of our conservative volatility box. Now, if we go to the Dow, 
and we'll bring this back to Friday's activity, we see something slightly different in which the Dow did give us an opportunity to go long towards the end of the hour, but still did give us an opportunity to get long. However, did stop us out for those of you that had fairly tight stops, right? And I think this is where uh, I, I'm not sure that you would have been able to avoid this. The only way uh, or rather new trick that we've learned is the idea of going on our three minute chart and then using the reversal, if you're looking to go long, then looking for that first yellow candle. And if you're looking to go short, then looking for that first orange candle. But even in this case, that still ended up taking you out right here. And now finally, we'll move on to the Russell and head back to Friday's activity. We had another opportunity to go long the Russell and the Russell did something very similar, right? Using our conservative volatility box as it continued to break down even lower. And here, if you use that three minute chart and you looked for that reversal point, your first reversal point was really this green candle right here, which helped you avoid this sort of a move. Uh, again, hindsight is 2020, And so our volatility box plan would have gotten you in right here. If you were a little bit more cautious and waiting for that confirmation, waiting for an opportunity to get it on the way up, okay to overpay, which would happen multiple times, then this time you ended up uh, getting a better entry. So really that's based off of your own trading style and uh, risk tolerance, uh, which sort of entry you got. And for those of you that trade ETS, then this was a, a bearable move for you to hold through uh, and really see if you got that sort of follow through based off of that overall bullish bias that we were able to cultivate off of Thursday's trading activity. All right, so I hope that video recap helped. Uh, the idea of a little bit bigger picture where if we now go to our daily chart, we can take a look to see from where we had our entry, which was, uh, we'll just use the ES as our benchmark, the 3165. Uh, and from there, where the markets have currently gone, and if 3165 ends up becoming a little bit bigger support, or if price can come back down, touch 3165, overlap with some of our volatility boxes before continuing to make a move up higher, especially against all odds and defying what people consider to be an upcoming recession right now, we're seeing the market just continue to rip higher. So let's trade the charts that we see in front of us uh, and we'll use the volatility boxes information and see what happens in the marketplace. All right, take care everyone and we'll see you in tomorrow's nightly update.